Hello, everybody. I'm Eustace Farmer, and welcome to Dusty Cove, Episode 1 for Farming Simulator 17. The title to this episode is People Have Seasons Too. And that means just what it says. We're born into the spring of our lives, and during the summer, we are at our best, our peak, and we flourish. And then, towards the autumn, we start settling in and slowing down to our golden years. And then, when we reach the winter in our lives, that kind of settles into completing our journey here on this beautiful planet. So this is the story of Oliver Blackmore, a character I created, and his relationship with his grandfather. So I do hope you enjoy. My name is Oliver Blackmore, and I was born to my mother, Emily Watterson, and my father, Julian Blackmore, in Cornwall, England, many decades more than I'd like to count or share. I say my father's name with a hesitation because, as time went by, he really didn't lend much to my upbringing. He decided his life would be better spent running off with the woman that ran the bakery in town and start a new life and a new family. He really wasn't much for farming. And to be honest, he really wasn't much for working in general. As time passed, and it didn't take long, my mother really couldn't deal with the embarrassment or even the snickers and gossip behind her back. She's a single parent and there was all kinds of stories of why that happened and when you don't talk much to people about things, they kind of fill in their own blanks and create stories to fill the gaps. She was also embarrassed that she was living with my father's parents. So she contacted a friend of hers that had moved to the States a few years prior. They had offered us a place to stay while she got on her feet if she ever wanted it. So my mother took her up on it. My mother went to school to learn how to be a teacher. And she was a wonderful teacher. And we had a wonderful life in the States. So if you're wondering why I don't have a Cornish accent, <laughs> that's pretty much why. But when summers came and I wasn't in school, I would come back to England any chance I could, when my mother couldn't afford it. And I would spend the entire summer helping my grandfather on the farm. And my nan, too. I loved it. This is a beautiful place, this sleepy little village, Dusty Cove. It's a little stuttered in time. They're not very quick to catch on to all the modern trends. But in their own given time, they take on things they think that are important and that matters but we kind of like things the way they are, and we try to keep them as unspoiled as possible. My nan says Sundays are the Lord's Day, and there's no work that needs to be done that can't wait till Monday. So she used to take me and grandfather up to the castle to have a picnic during the summer on Sundays. 
and even sometimes my crazy uncle Archibald and his wife Vera would join us. And they are a hoot, that's for sure. They love children, and they love to play like children. It was good fun. I do miss them a lot. It was a welcome treat to come and catch the cool ocean breeze. Sometimes I'd like to go down to the docks when I had nothing to do and see if I could help the fishermen. And they'd throw you a few quid now and then so you could go to the shops and buy some sweets. Uncle Archibald worked at the local dealership and repair shop. He never could seem to wash all the grease off his hands as hard as he tried. <laughs> My nan said, Don't touch Oliver's good clean shirt with those grease-stained hands. And this here's my school. I remember my good friend Wesley playing with him out here, chasing him around. We were like two scared jackrabbits running all over the place. Sometimes we'd get a long piece of fishing line, tie it to a stick and drop it down off that bridge. And I always wondered what it would be like to go out that island and climb up to the top of that lighthouse. There's even a secret little beach that you can get to from a little twisted path. And if you're really adventurous, you can explore the woodlands. There's a couple of big spots here. And all the shady lanes, stone homes. It truly is a magical little place. But hey, we even got a BGA. So they were a bit modern doing that. But for the most part, they keep to the simple things. Once you're of working age, if you want a summer job, you can come work part-time at the sawmill. They're always looking for somebody to throw wood around or sweep up the sawdust or clean the machines. But I used to like to go to explore, and we used to make ghost stories about the scary little stone house in the woods, long since abandoned. We'd also have a lot of fun down on the river and the lake. My grandfather actually had an old boat, and after picnicking, sometimes we'd take a ride on the boat. That was his pride and joy. I remember it like it was yesterday. Sailing off into the wild blue, my mind would just run crazy with pirate stories and all kinds of sea monsters and crazy things like that. And then early, one spring Easter vacation morning, I remember the doors to that horrid black van closing and taking my grandfather away. He was gone. His season had come to a close. Days turn into weeks, and weeks into months, and seasons come and go so fast like the wind. The seasons turn into years, and the years fold right into decades, and it helped ease the sting in the loss of grandfather's passing. I still came when I could to help Nan with the farm trying to make a go of it any way we could, but to be honest, being a boy and shoveling cow manure and 
Cleaning tractors just doesn't make a farmer. But we try. But the money wasn't coming in. And then she just kind of lost hope. And she wound up coming to live with me and Mom back in the States. And she passed on a few years later. And we brought her to Cornwall so she can rest. Just last year, my mother passed. So I made up my mind to go ahead and pack up everything I own and make a new start of it again in my old stomping ground. And I couldn't have planned a worse time to start my journey, but I was thrilled to see that sign for Dusty Cove. Uh, the snow was coming down at a furious rate. I don't quite remember it being this heavy as a kid. Slipping and sliding all over the place on my bald tires on my new used SUV. Then it came. The inevitable. I lost control and ran myself straight into the hedge. So now this tacks on a little extra inconvenience and time to my adventure. And I certainly just cost myself money that I don't have. Man, there's no way I could push that out. So, I'm going to have to go ahead into town and see if I can ring somebody up. Get down here and help me pull this out. But I will say, even amongst this mini-tragedy here, I still found time to soak in the beauty of the new falling snow across the night sky and lining the streets of the shops. It really was beautiful. But I really need to find a phone. And thank you, God, here we are. And by the looks of all the equipment and the fanfare, oh man, seems like I've woken up the entire town of Dusty Cove. I was mortified. And then as I'm standing there watching them work, I started to think to myself, how can I even run a farm with the equipment if I can't even keep a simple truck on the road? But we have to chin up and get it behind us. It's loaded up. It's going to be fixed. And it's going to be better. It just has to be better. So the driver took pity on me. And he offered to take me home on his way. He really wasn't on his way. He was a real kindly gentleman. And I'd say it really was nice to get back to the farm. said my goodbyes and with my head hung low I had a look at the house from the street and then with a worn out staggered walk I headed for the front door it really was a welcome sight all I can think of was a hot meal of some kind a shower and a warm, soft bed. But before I adjourned for the evening, I wanted to end it on a good note. I took a look at the old house and panned around the yard and soaked in this beautiful, snowy night. And then in I go. It'll be better in the morning, won't it? caretaker's wife was kind enough to bring me over some nice hot oatmeal and strong coffee. And boy, am I going to need it. I am still really sore. Uh, take a minute to have a look around and 
Soak in the serene beauty. Uh, there is a lot of work to get done before spring hits. Got to get this cattle barn in shape. Shoveled out, get it ready for animals eventually. And then the daunting task of going through all this old equipment and seeing what's still salvageable and what has to be sold off. Now this hay wagon still looks good, and the baler's probably going to need some work, but I think I can save it. And the rusty old animal trailer. Well, at least it's still standing. We can use it. And the workshop. I remember sitting on a stool in there while Grandfather fixed the tractors. Not sure why he refused to put doors on here, though. All the snow and the dirt and the rain blowing in here. He always says he likes to work outdoors, even when he's indoors. <laughs> I'll go ahead and plop this down over here. I'm sure we're going to need it. Hey, I remember this old truck. One of his friends, Mark DuPont, gave him this. Well, he sold it to him, but it was so cheap it wasn't even worth saying it was sold. And then the old Massey. Well, let's see if we can get it started. Well, time to get the old toolbox and try to resurrect this old girl. See you in a bit. All right, here goes nothing. Yes, success. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now we can get on with today's business. Which isn't really going to be much business. I just figured I'd take a look at the other two yards and see the lay of the land, what we have, what we don't have, and see what we got uh, ahead of us before spring hits. May as well go and open the other gate across the street while I'm here. Just going to have to stop and do it again. All right. I almost want to close my eyes and not look. I can see we still have that old cloth pulled up over here. Have to have a look at that. I can bet you a year's pay that's not going to start up. That's been sitting here too long. Now why use my flashlight? Let's see if the lights work over here. Oh yes. Good old fluorescent bulbs. Now it still looks decent on the outside. Let's see if we can crank it over. Well, no sense in beating a dead horse. Put that on the list. I wonder if the header still works. Looks like it's in good shape. I will have to test it. I certainly have my work cut out for me. Uh, here's the 698 over here. Now well, the Massey trailer still looks like it's in good shape. Might need some grease in the axles and the bearings, but... It should roll. Our silage clamps. I still say hour. <laughs> it's just me now. Ah, oh, and this old lizard. Oh, I remember riding, standing up there on the deck with Grandfather. Out there in the fall, smelling the crisp autumn air. Oh, and what a treat that was. I better shut the lights before he yells. Electricity doesn't grow on trees, lad. I can hear him now. <laughs> ah, what a day. Uh, well, we could leave the old girl running. Nobody will bother it around here. Wow, this place is buried in snow. 
and it looks as it is, set in time, hasn't been used in many years. If there is any grain in those silos, well, that's going to have to be cleared out. That's going to be a nasty job. I'm going to have to get this plow inside, too. Can't have that sitting out here rusting away. Gonna need that in the spring for sure. Oh, wow. Another old truck. I remember riding off to market with Grandfather. Two wagon loads full of grain. This is the only dolly trailer that I've ever seen that has a locking front axle. So you can actually back it up. What a treat that is. Let's have a look in here. We might get lucky. And no, we're not lucky. There's nothing. I thought maybe I might find something interesting that Grandfather squirreled away. He did like to tuck things away for a rainy day. Ugh. Oh. Ooh, these doors need a little grease, too. Oh, the snow blows right in under the doors. Then I have to think about, I don't know, doing something to seal that up. I don't want our bales to go rotten if we put them over here. Well, I think that's it for over here today. I'm going to have to wait for some of this snow to melt before I can really get in here and, I don't know, figure out what's going to go where. Uh, it's going to take God's hand on my right shoulder and grandfather's on my left to get this done. I sure am scared. I think my next stop today should be go into town and go say a prayer at the local church and light a candle for grandfather and Nan. Well, thank you very much for watching. And I hope this video finds you well. So please take good care of yourself. And I'll see you in the spring.